My name is Lauren Weinberg, and I'm speaking about this issue because I'm a Jewish parent with two children who attend Empire Public School in Waterloo. I'm asking the board to reject the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism because it will not protect Jewish students and staff. In fact, it will harm them and many other members of our community. My delegation will show that Jewish does not equal Israeli and Jewish does not equal Zionist. Anti-Semitism in Waterloo Region is overwhelmingly caused by white supremacists, not by Palestinians or anyone else from countries in conflict with Israel. The IHRA definition suppresses legitimate criticism of Israel, and the IHRA definition is less concerned with protecting Jews than it is with protecting Zionists, many of whom are Christian fundamentalists. Next slide, please. Um, these are two pages from the passport that my father, Erwin Weinberg, used in 1939 when he and his parents, who were Jewish refugees, escaped Vienna and fled to New York. The Holocaust affected both sides of my family. My maternal grandmother's younger sister was murdered by the Nazis in Poland. Another sister only survived the war because she was hidden by her Polish neighbors. The lesson I took from this is that I have a moral obligation to stand up for people who are being oppressed. And that's why I'm giving this presentation. I have not mentioned Israel because I am not Israeli. Although Jews come from all over the world, my ancestors happen to be from Eastern Europe. They've never lived in Israel, Palestine, and neither have I. Next slide, please. In fact, around the world, more than half of all Jews are not Israeli. Some Jews outside Israel, Palestine feel an affinity for that country for religious reasons, but many others do not. In Canada and the United States, this is particularly true of younger Jews who've grown up with the internet and in more diverse communities than their parents and grandparents, and therefore have access to more information about Israel-Palestine. Um, I think it's significant that a Jewish Electorate Institute poll found that 38% of American Jews are, quote, not emotionally attached to Israel. It's also important to remember that not all Israelis are Jews, and this is another fact erased by the IHRA definition. More than a fifth of the population are Palestinian citizens of Israel, who are not the same people as the Palestinians living in the West Bank and Gaza. Next slide, please. My children and I are not morally superior to Israeli Jews. It's just chance that brought my grandparents to North America instead of Israel, and I have also always lived on stolen land. But my kids are free to discuss how Canada has been a racist endeavor, and they understand that we will never have reconciliation or justice unless we have those discussions. Shielding Israel from similar criticism is unfair, especially to the many Waterloo Region students and staff who have ties to Palestine, Syria, Lebanon, and other countries that have been in conflict with Israel. Uh, one reason why I claim the IHRA definition does a better job of protecting Zionists than Jews is that out of its 11 supposed examples of anti-Semitism, seven involve Israel, and these are three of them. The IHRA definition states that criticism of Israel, similar to that leveled against any other country, cannot be regarded as anti-Semitic. But my question is, who decides what's similar and what's a double standard? What will happen if you adopt the IHRA definition is that marginalized students will be afraid to speak about their experiences, and teachers will be afraid to discuss this region at all. This is a disservice to all students. Next slide, please. Um, based on these statistics, a significant percentage of Jews would be anti-Semitic according to the definition. And there are many Jews like my parents who might not agree with these statements, but who profoundly disagree with Israeli government policies. My father would not have wanted criticisms of those policies to be suppressed. And he would not have believed that that would have made him safer as a Jew in North America. Um, next slide, please. There is no monolithic Jewish community. I mentioned that Jews come from all over the world, not just Europe. Not every Jew's family history involved the Holocaust. We have a range of political beliefs, 
and Orthodox, conservative, and reformed Jews have very different beliefs about the Bible, the role of women, Jewish law, and other issues. So it's impossible for any Jewish organization to speak for all of us, including pro-Israel organizations like B'nai B'rith and the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs. This is a list of some of the many Jewish organizations that reject the IHRA definition. And the IJV report um, has compiled specific examples of censorship caused by the IHRA definition. Even the lead author of the definition, Kenneth Stern, has said it should not be used as a hate speech code. He said it's an attack on academic freedom and free speech that will harm not only pro-Palestinian advocates, but also Jewish students and faculty and the academy itself. Next slide, please. Um, Waterloo Region is the most anti-Semitic place I've ever lived. I moved here in 2014, and it's discouraging to see the glorification of Mackenzie King, who would have sent my father back to Europe to die if he'd sought asylum here. It was upsetting to read about how local politicians tried to protect Helmut Oberlander, and after a lifetime of seeing zero anti-Semitic graffiti, I've seen three examples of it in the past eight years. But the people protecting former Nazis, vandalizing synagogues, and leaving swastikas and neo-Nazi flyers around the region are not my Palestinian neighbors. The people who frighten me as a Jewish parent are white supremacists, and the members of the Christian far right who keep trying to impose their religious views on our secular school system. Next slide, please. My older child started senior kindergarten in 2018, just as the Ford administration abandoned the updated health and physical education curriculum. Ford's ally, Charles McVetty, a far-right preacher and the head of Canada Christian College, seen here on the left, had urged his followers to vote for Doug Ford precisely to overturn this curriculum. I resent this interference in my children's education, which does not reflect my religion or the wishes of most Ontario parents. And I'm furious about the targeting of queer and trans students and staff by members of the Christian far right over the past year. Charles McBetty is the head of Christians United for Israel in Canada, but he does not have my Jewish children's best interests at heart. Christian Zionists believe that Israel-Palestine must be under Jewish control to bring about the second coming of Jesus. They also believe that in the end times, Jews will either convert to Christianity or go to hell. In the United States, Christians United for Israel has 10 million members, making it the country's largest Zionist organization, whereas the country only has 6 million Jews. I'm emphasizing this because I hope you will think about who really benefits if the school board adopts the IHRA definition. Is it Jewish students and staff, or is it members of the Christian far right who are using Jews to further their own religious goals? Next slide, please. So how should the WRDSB combat anti-Semitism? Just continue to foster an anti-racist environment. I don't think that you need a special definition of anti-Semitism, and it seems inappropriate to elevate one when other marginalized students and staff are at much greater risk of violence. Recognize that anti-Semitism here is linked to Islamophobia, transphobia, and other forms of bigotry. There is no conflict between the rights of Jews and Palestinians in our community because we are in danger from the same people. Thank you.